Hey everyone, <laughs> welcome back. Let's do some more Hamlet, shall we? Um, somebody responded back that uh, the last video was helpful, so I'm all about being helpful and we'll do another one today. It's actually Monday, March 30, March 30th. Yeah, Monday, March 30th. Um, and I think we're gonna be out for a little bit longer. I know the, the national head, the national guidelines it works into April 30th. I'm sure the Governor Cuomo will follow suit and we're not gonna see each other for a while. That's my belief. So we'll keep doing this, we'll keep talking, and we'll try to get a Zoom going and spend some time together because I miss you all. I do. I miss you a lot. All right. So when last we left Hamlet, Hamlet had killed Polonius, pulled out his dagger and just stabbed into the curtain and killed him. Uh, the first rash, not um, thought out act that he's done the entire play, right? It's all about him being paralyzed from action. Thus, conscience doesn't make cowards of us all. Thus, the native hue of resolution is sickly over with a pale cast of thought. Thinking about it keeps us from acting. And he's that way the entire play. Except this one moment. He pulls out his dagger and stabs the curtain, hoping, of course, that he's killed the king. Um, but it's it's only Polonius. So it's crazy, and like I said, this crazy scene where Polonius is laying there and bleeding all over the place. He continues to yell at his mom and then stops mid-yell to hold a conversation with what Gertrude thinks is the air. Nothing in the air there. But he sees the ghost who has come but to whet thy almost blunted purpose. To, you know, remember what you're supposed to be doing. Leave your mom alone. Go kill your uncle. I was pretty clear on that. You said you'd forget everything else except that. That of uh, that alone would live in the book and volume of your brain. And you haven't done anything yet. So uh, time to get going, Hamlet. Ham and Gertrude continue the conversation. And he says to her, you know, don't go to bed with the king anymore. You know, no more sex, no more incest, no more being his little mousy, right? And don't let him unravel from you my secret that I'm not really crazy, that I'm really just mad and crap, that this is all a plan. This is all part of a, um, the process. You know, trust the process, Nick Saban would say. It's all part of the process to um, get revenge. Because right? he tells her, uh, it's almost as bad good mothers kill a king and marry with his brother. I don't think these, I don't know. This is a crazy, this is a crazy shit. Go down. Um, and she didn't seem to understand, be a part of the killing. Right? Okay, so Act 4 starts off with the king coming in and saying, what happened? Um, tell us, you know, there's, there's meaning in your, these heavy sighs, Gertrude. What's happened? And she says to him, just what she promised Hamlet she would, that he's crazy. She doesn't give away a secret. She says, mad is the sea and the wind when both contend, which is the mightier. In his lawless fit behind the heiress, hearing something stir, whips out his rapier, cries, a rat, a rat. And in his brainish apprehension, kills the unseen good old man. In this frenzied belief, you look at your side note, he pulls up his dagger and kills uh, whoever was behind the curtain. And it happened to be, of course, Polonius, who was hiding. And... Um, Stop spying on them because he said, I'll come back and tell the king what happens tonight. He didn't make it. All right, and the king is like, Oh, heavy deed. It had been so with us had we been there. That's the royal us, the royal we. He says, If I had been hiding behind the heirs like I was with Polonius the last time when they were spying on Hamlet and Ophelia, right, the, right, right after the to be or not to be speech, remember Hamlet and Ophelia run into each other, and um, she gives him back all the love letters and the tokens of endearment and all the things. And then he gets really mad and he's hurt and it comes out as anger. And then when he hears them hiding back there and knows she's betrayed him, then he gets really mad and says, get thee to a nunnery, a, a whorehouse. And don't be a breeder. Sinners. And he gets real nasty with her. The king says, if I'd been hiding again, like I did last time, I'd be dead right now. We got to get we got to get rid of Hamlet. And he goes on to say people are going to blame us. Because as king and queen, we should have known he was crazy. We should have confined him. We shouldn't have let him run rampant, um, which is actually perfect for what's going on right now, right? So you keep him confined. Don't let the contagion spread. And that's what he says. He says, but so much was our love, we would not understand what was most fit. But like the owner of a foul disease, like current times, to keep it from divulging, we let it feed even on the pith of life. We let Hamlet run around 
un, untethered, you know, free reign. And this is what happened. This craziness came out in him. He's killed Apollonius. So people are going to be mad at us. We've got to do something about it. Um, we're going to send him away to England. And Claudius tells Gertrude it's for his own safety. That for his own safety, we're going to send him away and get him away from this situation and take care of him. What? Oh, seriously, come here. Don't just sit there, Maddie. Come here. Okay. Claudius wants to kill Hamlet. He wants him dead. So that's why he's sending him away. Shh, don't tell him. All right. <clears throat> so he says, uh, Rosencrantz and, and Guildenstern, come on. You're going to go with him. Take him to England. Um, we've got, he's got to go tonight, before, you know, with no hesitation. Immediately, we got to send him away. Okay. All right. That's scene one. Scene two, back in the castle, Hamlet is refusing to tell Rosencrantz and Guildenstern where the body is. Um, and this is more of the circle of life theme. So let's listen to some of this. Hamlet says, safely stowed, meaning the body. Uh, and they're screaming, Hamlet, Lord Hamlet, where are you? Hamlet! And Hamlet's like, the song. Oh, here they come. Remember, he knows they're here to spy them. He knows he can't trust Rosencrantz. What have you done, my lord, with a dead body? Compounded it with dust, where to tis kin. Tell us where it is that we may take it thence and bear it to the chapel. Do not believe it. Believe what? Then I can keep your counsel and not mine own. Besides, to be demanded of a sponge, what replication should be made by the son of a king? He says, demanded of a sponge. That's an odd line, right? What does he mean, demanded of a sponge? So he says, take you, take, uh, take you me for a sponge, my lord? Here's Hamlet's explanation. I serve that soaks up the king's countenance, his rewards, his authorities. You're, you, you're um, <sighs> riding on the on the coattails of the king, right? You're, so, you're soaking up all the good stuff from the king right now. But when the king is done with you, like a big ape that keeps food in the side of his mouth, right? Until he's done with it, he splits it out. He says, the king, he's using you right now. And yes, you're getting the benefit of that. But when the king is done with you, he's going to spit you out and be done with you, just like an ape would for a piece of food inside of his mouth. Rosa goes, I don't even understand what you're saying. He goes, I'm glad of it. And he goes, anyway, my lord, you've got to tell us where the body is and go with us to the king. The body is with the king, but the king is not with the body. The king is a thing. A thing, my lord? Of nothing. And then Hammer says, bring me to him. Like, okay. You know, take me in. And then when they go to grab, he goes, hide Fox and all after her. And he runs off. It's like hide and seek. So he pretends like he's going to let him catch him. And then choo, he takes off running. And they all got to chase and follow him. Um, in the movie we were watching, they had all those secret passages and doors and windows and, and crazy stuff. They keep going through all those. You know, Hammock is running away from the guards. And, and so it's a big chase scene. Okay. So Castle 3. Uh, castle 3. Scene 3, back in the castle. And the king um, says, I have sent to seek him and to find the body. How dangerous it is that this man goes loose. Yet must not we put the strong law on him. He's loved the distracted multitude who like not in their judgment, but their eyes. And who tis so the offender scourges way, but never the offense. To bear all smooth and even, this sudden send him away must seem deliberate pause. Disease is desperate grown by desperate appliance or relieve or not at all. Got to be carefully thought out. Now, we're going to send him away, but we got to be careful about it. Because here's what he says. Uh, the people love Hamlet. And oftentimes when celebrities or people uh, who other people love a lot or look up to get in trouble or do something wrong, instead of thinking about the, the crime they committed and weighing that, we just weigh how much we like that person. Right? And then we get, oh, it's not fair. So-and-so you know, is getting punished. He says, well, I can't do that. So, Because if I come down too hard on Hamlet, the people might turn on me because they love him. But I can't just let it go. And he can't let it go. Why? What's the real reason he can't let it go? Think about this. Since the play happened, um, the murder of Gonzaga, or as Hamlet says, the mousetrap is what he calls it because he's trying to catch the king. The play is the thing where I'll catch the conscience of the king. Since the play, the king has known that Hamlet knows. Because he put a play on that looked just like what he did, how he killed his brother and stole the crown and stole the queen. So he knows Hamlet is guilty. Uh, no, 
he knows, Hamlet knows that he's guilty, and he's going to send him away to England. But Polonius talked him into letting him stay. He goes, no, 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 not yet. Um, let me spy on the conversation at nighttime, and then I'll come back and tell you, if you're not happy, then you can send him away. And the king agreed, because the king doesn't make very good decisions. Um, and which is why he let Fortinbras walk through his, his country, but we'll get back to that. So Hamlet then kills Polonius that night. The play happens. The king knows that Hamlet understands what, that he's guilty. He kills Polonius a little bit later. And now the king's like, we got to get rid of him. But I got to make sure it doesn't turn on me and hurt, come, you know, come back to bite me in the butt. So it's going to look like we carefully planned out this and we're going to send him away for his own safety. It's all going to be good. Okay? And then Rosencrantz says, um, the, the dead body's bestowed, but he won't tell us where it is. And King, king says, well, basically bring in Hamlet. All right. Now the king, this is a great scene. Now, Hamlet, where's Polonius? Hamlet, at supper. I'm on page 195 if you want to read along. At supper. At supper where? Not where he eats, but where he has eaten. A certain complication of politic worms are eaten at him. Your worm is your only emperor for diet. We fat all creatures else to fat us, and we fat ourselves for maggots. Your fat king and your lean beggars, but variable service. Two dishes, but to one table. That's the end. Alas, alas. A man may fish with a worm that hath eat of a king, and eat of a fish that hath fed of that worm. What does thou mean by this? Nothing but to show you how a king may go or progress in the guts of a beggar. Where is Polonius? Whack! And usually you, you see him get smacked. You know, the king smacked him. But look at the funny thing that Hamlet said, okay? This is the circle of life, right? Hamlet says, um, where, he goes, where's Polonius? Hamlet says, oh, he's at supper. Oh, oh, he's not eating supper. He's being eaten for supper. Uh, a bunch of worms are eating at him right now, you know, even as we talk. He goes, your worm... Um, is your only emperor for diet. We fat all creatures else to fat us. Right? We fatten up the cows, we fatten up the chickens, we fatten up, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't do this. I don't know some of you there are those. But we fatten up, fatten up all the creatures so that we can eat and get fat ourselves. Um, but then we fatten up ourselves for the maggots in the ground. Once we die, we get in the ground and we get eaten up by the maggots and the worms and such things. Your fat king and your lean beggar are but two dishes to the same table for the maggots. Right? When the fat king dies or when the homeless man dies with no um, skin on his bone whatsoever, you still, <clears throat> they both still get eaten by the maggots. Two dishes but to one table. And then he goes, then he says, a man may fish with a worm that have eat of a king and then eat that fish that have fed of that worm. And the king's like, yeah, what do you mean by this? Nothing but to show you how a king may go a progress through the guts of a beggar. So a beggar can grab a worm that has eaten a fat king, go fishing, eat the fish that ate the worm that ate the king, and then the beggar goes and takes a big poop and out comes the king, right? Because the worm ate the king, that the fish ate the worm, and you ate the fish. And show you how a king can go the, through a progress through the guts of a beggar, right? Really ticks Polonius off. He's like, where is Polonius? Wham! And Hamlet's like, ooh. <laughs> in heaven, Hamlet says, send, send, to see. send your messenger to heaven to see if you find Polonius. But if you don't find him there, you go find him in the other place yourself. In other words, he just told the king, you go to hell. Right? If, you can't, if your messenger doesn't find him out there, then you go to hell and find him yourself. Uh, but if you can't find him, you're your nose and you're going you're gonna to smell them when you go up the stairs with, within a month. You're going to start to smell the dead, rotting, composing body. And the king's are, the king's like, go get him from the stairs where you put him. And Ham's like, oh, hey, he'll wait till you get there. Don't worry. <laughs> and then, here's the scene. And then Hamlet, the, they go on. And the king says, Hamlet, this deed, <laughs> I almost, almost fell. Hamlet, this deed for thine especial safety, which we do tenders, we do grill, grilly, Dearly grave for that which thou hast done, we hold your safe in such regard, as much as we hold uh, in the importance of what you've just done, lie. We must send thee hence with fiery quickness. Therefore, prepare thyself. The bark is ready and the wind is a help. The associates tend and everything's bent for England. The ship is ready. Your attendants are there. You're ready to get on the boat and go right now to England for your safety. <coughs> Hamlet says, for England? Aye, Hamlet, good. So it is if thou knewest our purposes. Oops. 
the king kind of let that slip. The, the hound's like, oh, good, I'm going to England. And the king's like, yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't think so if you knew what we got planned. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But Ham's like, oh, I see a cherub that sees him. And look at your side note. A cherub is an angel of knowledge. Maybe referring to the ghost here. Got a little extra, extra worldly help to know what's been going on, right? But come, for England, farewell, dear mother. He, he looks at the king and says, farewell, dear mother. And the king says, thy loving father, Hamlet. I'm not your mother, I'm your father. Hamlet responds with, my mother. Father and mother is man and wife. Man and wife is one flesh. And so, my mother. And all of them just can go, I kiss the king right there. And he's like, ah, what? Come, for England. Follow him at foot. Tempt him with speed aboard. Delay it not. I'll have him hence tonight. Rosencrantz and Gilmer saying, go with him. I will have him gone tonight. Um, for, every, for everything is sealed and done, the else names of the affair. Pray you make haste. And now here's the thing. Here's where we get the, we understand for sure what's happening. Everyone's out of the room. So it's just the king. And he says, and England, if my love thou holdst at aught, if you hold, if you hold the, my love to be important at all, as my great power thereof may give thee sense, since yet thy secretress looks raw and red after the Danish sword, and thy free awe pays homage to us. <coughs> thou mayst not coldly set our sovereign process. I'm sorry, hang on. <coughs> I think they, I don't know. Uh, our sovereign process, which imports it full, by letters congruing to that effect, the present death of Hamlet. Do it, England! For like the hectic in my blood, he rages, and thou must cure me. If I know tis done, how are my haps, my joys were ne'er begun. What? He said all was sealed, right? And so he says, do it, England. If you love me at all, if you if you value the relationship between England and Norway, I included letters that say, as soon as you open these letters and read this, kill Hamlet. Because he's like a, a disease in my body that I can't get rid of. And until he's gone, no matter what happens to me, I can't be happy. I can't, I can't have joy until I know that he is dead. Okay. So going forth now, from, the, from now until a little bit later on, the king is going on the assumption, the assumption that Hamlet is going to go be killed. Right? He's going to go off to England, he's going to be killed, and, and he's done with this problem. He's going to get away with killing Claudia, uh, Hamlet Sr. He's going to get away with everything that he's done. Uh, he doesn't have to worry about Hamlet anymore. It looks like he's taking care of Hamlet, so uh, Gertrude won't be mad at him for sending her son away because she knows what happened. In his mind, it's all good. We're going to do one more, we're going to do one more scene here with um, this big soliloquy here, another New Year's resolution moment. Um, of it when he sees Fortinbras coming, but Fortinbras' army coming. But let me say first this, okay? We have three, let me mark my spot. We have three sons whose fathers have been killed. And we have three different responses. Who are our three, three sons? We have Hamlet, whose dad was killed. We have Fortinbras, whose dad was killed. Remember, we talked at the very beginning about, or did we even talk about this? Surely we did. Um, I don't know if I was there or not. But the king of Norway um, challenged the king of Hamlet to a duel. right? And instead of pink slips for cars like in Greece that they were fighting for, they fought for pieces of land. And that's why young Fortinbras wants to um, keep telling that Denmark they need to surrender and get those lands back now that the Hamlet Sr. is dead. But in that duel, Hamlet Sr. killed uh, Fortinbras Sr. Right. So young Fortinbras, the Fortinbras in the play right now, he's our second son whose dad was killed. And now we have a third son, Laertes, because his dad, Polonius, was just stabbed by Hamlet behind the curtain. So we have three sons who died. We have Hamlet, who now imagine that this is the rasho meter, R-A-S-H-O meter, rash. How rash are you? And right here is paralyzed with four, paralyzed, no rashness at all. And what we hear is... Uh, so rash, you don't even think about anything. And in the middle then would be in between. So Hamlet is way over here on the rational meter. He can't act. He can't do anything. 
it, conscience does make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sickly door for the pale cast of thought. Every time he has one of these New Year's resolution moments, he talks himself out of it. Oh, now I could do it. Oh, what if the ghost is lying to me? How would I get more proof? Oh, now the actor is getting all upset with the play, with the story about Hecuba. Oh, now I'm going to do it. Oh, but no, I better, what if I talk myself out of it again? Then he puts the play on. Um, uh, and he comes, oh, oh, then he comes across, he puts the play on. He says what happened. He comes across the king who he thinks is praying. Now I'll kill him. Yes. Oh, no, but what? Then he'll go to heaven. And my dad didn't get to go to heaven. That's not fair. No, no, I'll wait for another time. Talks himself out of it again. Right? Um, time and time and time again. He can't act. On the, on, in the middle of the ratio meter, we have Fortinbras, who was going to attack, remember? And then they found out he was going to attack with his lawless band of resolutes, and they, he, they sent a letter to old Norway, his uncle, who was the king, and his uncle chides him and says, you can't do that. And when Fortinbras says, okay, sorry, my bad. Norway says, here's 60,000 crowns a year in salary. Take all those people you were going to attack Pol uh, Denmark with and go attack Poland. Oh, and ask if you can walk through Denmark to get there. So that's what they do. They say, hey, King Claudius, you're right. We were going to attack you, but now we're not. We're not. Seriously. We're, we're, no, no, we're not. No, I mean it. But we want to attack those other folks in Poland. Can we go through your land to get there? And Claudius is like, oh, yeah, <laughs> sounds like a good idea. You were going to kill me, but now you're going to kill someone else, so you can walk right by me to do it. So this is what we're going to see right now. Fort Ross's army is going through Denmark to get to Poland to fight. Um, and they're going to come back, which is going to play at the end. Okay? And our last, and my arm doesn't go this way, so this way. I feel like Ultraman. You guys know Ultraman? Um, that's my boyhood. So on this side is Laertes, whose dad has been killed. And we're going to see him later. He's going to come running back from, where is he? France. Good. He's going to come running back from France when he finds that his father's dead with his sword unsheathed to the neck of the king going, Give me my father! I'll kill you! I don't care! Right? So rash. He doesn't think anything out. We have three, we have three different sons whose father's been killed. I don't know what this I don't know. I can't even yell at you. Three different sons whose fathers have been killed and three different responses. All right. So the last scene, let's do this last scene. Oh, we're getting long. This last scene uh, that we're going to do today um, is scene four. And the captain, Ford and Bras says, hey, captain, go um, greet the Danish king for me. Tell him we appreciate him letting us walk through his land to go to Poland to kill the, to kill the folks in Poland. And he says, okay, I'll do it. Now, Hamlet and Rosencrantz and Gunnarsson are on their way to the harbor to get on the boat to go to England, so they're going to cross paths. The captain of Fort Ross's army going to see the king, and Hamlet going to the harbor, they're going to cross. Hamlet says to the captain, good sir, whose powers are these? They are of Norway, sir. How purpose, sir, I pray you, against some part of Poland, the captain says. Who commands them, sir? The nephew of old Norway, Fortinbras. Goes it against the main of Poland, sir, or for some frontier? Are you fighting to, to capture all of Poland or just some little piece of it? And the captain says, truly to speak it with no addition, we go to gain a little patch of ground that hath in it no profit but the name. To pay five ducats, five, I would not farm it. Nor will it yield the door or the polar breaker rate should be sold in fee. Like if they, if they capture it and sell it, they're not going to make any money off of it. And he goes, I wouldn't even pay five ducats for this piece of land to farm it. It's, it's nothing. It's meaningless. And Hamlet says, why? Then the Polak will never defend it. And the captain's like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's already garrisoned. It's already guarded. It's already defended. Hamlet, 2,000 souls and 20,000 ducats will not debate the question of this straw. This is the impossible of much wealth and peace that inward breaks and shows no cause without while the man dies. I humbly thank you, sir. God be with you, sir. Rosencrantz says, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. And he goes, Hamlet says, I'll be with you, I'll be with you straight. Go a little before. So now it's just Hamlet and his thoughts. And here's the, the soliloquy that we want to look for. How all occasions do inform against me and spur my dull revenge. What is a man, if his chief good and market of his time be but to sleep and feed a beast? No more. 
sure he that hath made us with such large discourse, looking before and after, gave us not the, that capability of godlike reason, the fuss in us unused. Now, whether it be bestial oblivion or some craven scruple of thinking too precisely on the events, a thought which for hath but one part wisdom, never three parts coward, I do not know why yet I live to say this things to do, since I have cause and will and strength and means to do it. Examples gross as earth exhort me. Witness this army of such mass and charge, led by a delicate and tender prince, whose spirit with divine ambition puff takes miles of the invisible events, exposing what is mortal and unsure to all that fortune, death, and danger dare, even for an eggshell. Rightly to be great is not disturbed without great argument, but greatly to find quarrel in a straw when honors at the stake. <laughs> How stand I then? that have a father killed, a mother stained, excitements of my reason and my blood, and let all sleep, while to my shame I see the imminent death of 20,000 men that for a fantasy and trick of fame go to their graves like beds, fight for a plot whereon the numbers cannot try the cause, which is not tomb enough and continent to hide the slain. Oh, from this time forth my thoughts be bloody or be nothing worth. New Year's resolution moment, you hear it, right? From this point forth, my thoughts be bloody or nothing worth. Spoiler alert. That's not how he, that's not um, how Hamlet is going forward. Okay. And it's interesting. We're going to, Hamlet's going to England. And you're like, hey, what, how's he get back to Denmark? What's going to happen? He's coming back. Don't worry. He's coming back shortly too as a different person. It, 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 there's a transformation. There's a transformation that takes place on this boat. Um, kind of like the translation we, we began to talk about with Marlowe, right? He goes from the ascetic um, with the palms facing out over the yellow skin to the pose of a meditating Buddha uh, at the end. Bookends. There's a transformation that takes place in Hamlet when he goes and comes back. But let's look, but that's for another day. Let's look quickly at this um, soliloquy and then I'll let you go. How all occasions do inform against me and spur my dull revenge. Everywhere I look and everywhere I turn, there's something else that's saying to me, why aren't you doing what you're supposed to do? Why haven't you killed the, you know, the current king, your uncle? I don't know what I was going to say there. Your clunkle, your king, your king audience. Why have you not killed him? The, um... Put the play on to show he's guilty. The player does a speech which which shows how I should be passionate. And and again, my, well, my father came out of the came out of the grave. Well, out of the grave, came to tell me that he was murdered. Revenge, avenge my most foul and unnatural murder. And now here are twenty thousand men, twenty thousand men who are going to die for nothing. They're going to go for a piece of land that's not worth five ducats to farm. And at the end, he says, it's not tomb enough to bury the slain. There's not enough space in what they're going to fight for to bury all the dead. People are going to die fighting to get it. It's pointless. And here I am with a real cause. And I've done nothing. Surely, he says, what is, okay, what is a man? If his chief and good and market of his time is to but to sleep and feed, to be a beast. What good is it to be a human being if all we ever do is eat and sleep? All the animals do that. Surely he, capital he, meaning God, surely God would not have given us such a considerable power of re reasoning to let it grow moldy from lack of use. I'm just going to read the side out there. That's just said very well. Surely God didn't give us minds that can think and reason, and do all calculus and trigonometry and figure out how many billions of light years away the stars are, if he wanted us not to use it. Surely we're supposed to use our brains. <clears throat> now, whether it be bestial oblivion, beast like forgetfulness, or cowardly hesitation, or some craven scruple of thinking too precisely on the event, he knows his tragic flaw. He knows his tragic flaw. And what is it? He thinks too much. And he says, uh, uh, some craven scruple of thinking too precisely on the event. A thought, he says, if you cut a thought up into four pieces, one part of wisdom and three parts of cowardice. Sure, there's that one little piece of a thought that says, maybe I shouldn't do this, but most of it is just cowardice. 
I know I think too precisely on the event. I know I'm paralyzed by thought. I know I think too much. I do not know, he says, why I yet I live to say this thing's to do. I don't know why I'm still saying I've got to kill the king. I should have done it already. Since, since I have the cause and the will and the strength and the means to do it. What am I waiting for? Harken back to our earlier soliloquy. And yet I unpack my heart with words like a prostitute. How unpregnant of my cause. I sit here and do nothing. A son whose dear father was murdered. I've done nothing. I've had the, the, the means, the will, the cause, the, the, the opportunity. I could have killed him. Like, and earlier, earlier soliloquy, I could have fed all the region kites with the slaves offal. I could have killed him, cut his body up, and fed all the birds. What am I waiting for? I don't understand. And then he goes on to say, if we get down um, uh, to, the, to the bottom here, that they're going to go die for this piece of land that's not even worth dying for. There's not even there's not enough land to bury all the folks who are going to die trying to get it. From this point forward, right now, my dearest resolution. <laughs> oh, from this time forth, my thoughts be bloody or be nothing worse. Now I'm going to do it. No, he's not. Or at least not the way he thinks he's going to do it. Right? He doesn't. This whole bloody, vengeful. I want to kill my uncle. Hamlet, this melancholy, brooding, self-absorbed, I think that's okay to say that, self-absorbed Hamlet of the first four acts, when it is not the Hamlet that comes back from, from this short sojourn on the way to England. And then the next video, I'll explain to you well, what happens there um, as far as the trip to England, or at least on one of the videos. Uh, we'll see which one it falls into. All right. I hope that helps. <clears throat> um, I have not put up any assignments for you for this week yet. I said I will, and I will. I don't know what I'm going to ask you to do yet. Um, about a third of you got your independent reading papers in yes, last night. So, um, like I said to a bunch of folks, more things are important in this world than you end up doing independent reading papers. Um, get them in when you can. That's all. You know, I know you've got a lot of work from a lot of teachers. You're overwhelmed. You're trying to adjust the circumstances. You're trying. I want you to stay happy. I want you to be healthy. That's most important. Now, I will need a paper. I will need to put a grade in for fourth quarter. You know, when you got to get a couple in. But that independent reading paper is going to be in fourth quarter. Fourth quarter just started. I, I, I'm in no hurry. You do what works for you. All right. Just let me know what's going on. Send me a message. Let me know what's going on with you. If you didn't get one to me and you haven't talked to me yet. Um, and... What was I going to say? Independent reading papers. This is what I do in class. I forget to lose my train of thought. Independent reading paper. Independent, independent reading papers. Oh, independent reading. So if for some reason you cannot find a book that is on that list, pick a different book. Make sure it's literary, worthy liter literature. Um, one you haven't read already. You know, be people of integrity. I know you will be. Pick a different book. Read a different book. Tell me what it is. Do your paper. Okay. I'd rather you do the ones I gave you. If you can't find those, though, uh, either free versions, uh, the libraries are closed. Um, I don't want you going out spending all your money trying to buy books. So uh, online, you can buy it. You can do a different book. All right. Uh, that's it for today. Love you. Um, see you soon. You're blocking the camera. See you soon. Uh -huh.